Packers podcast. He's Aaron. I'm Chris. And we're here to talk some Vikings football. we got a big game coming up against the Dallas Cowboys. Halloween night at home. Sunday night football. Um, it's going to be a big game, obviously. It, it, you know, we talked a little bit about it last week, how, you know, these next four games, are very very crucial. It was it was awesome to get back to three and three, no doubt. Especially considering you know some of the tough teams we faced, and some of the circumstances I'll say that happened you know in those games. But it's put up or shut up time here in the next four games, no doubt about it. Be, you know, keep, like I said, being back in three and three is great, but it won't mean a whole lot if we go with this stretch. Obviously, zero and four, but even one and three because you start to get leaky but you know when you look at that six and seven spot right now it seems there's a top five and dallas is included in that some of these other teams that we're going to play is included in that top five in the nfc but when you look at that six and seven slot it's pretty damn wide open so i guess technically one and three would be doable but then we'd have to win like four in a row or three in a row somewhere anyway we will kind of talk post buy items offensively defensively um you know, obviously, Danzler is having to uh, step in here. You know, he tweeted something. He was he was wanting to play after starting a lot of games as a rookie and looking good down the stretch doing it, no doubt about it. But he's got to step up. You're just talking off air that he lost 15 pounds from COVID, man. I hope he's uh, back fully. Will, will Pierce come back? We did, you know, damn sure need him for this run. So there's a variety of things. Of course, we'll preview the Cowboys game. And then if you've been listening to the show for a while, you know we end the, the show on a gopher football segment. They got a big win over Maryland. They have a road game against Northwestern. Uh, but if this is your first time listening to this year Vikings podcast, welcome. It's available in a variety of areas. It streams live on blogtalkradio.com forward slash ropeadope radio. You don't have to go to blog talk and rope it open. Download the show directly there or listen to the browser. You can find the Rope Dope Radio podcast platform on Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, Player FM, TuneIn, other places. We're also part of the Grueling True Sports Podcast Network. While you're at it, why don't you head on over to thegruelingtruth.com. We also have a page that Aaron started up last year called Living in Loserville. Okay, some people like that name. Some people don't. Some people get what we're saying. Living in Loserville. At Spricker, it's a Spricker page. Of course, we you know we have this show there. We talk Gophers football and basketball in, of course, the Timberwolves once the football season's done in February because the Vikings are going on the Super Bowl. Okay, whatever. Anyway, that's Living in Loserville, Spricker. And also, one more thing. If you're thinking about cutting the cord or you have, you're not quite happy, I got something for you. It's called Direct TV Stream. The prices start as low as $69.99 a month. It's the best of live TV and on demand, no annual contract, no hidden fees. If you upgrade to the choice or ultimate, that gives you three free months of HBO Max, plus you get to enjoy regional sports networks with no additional fees. And if you go all the way to the premium, that gives you HBO Max and Showtime already included. That's direct TV stream. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my co-host to help kind of talk us through the post by topics. I mean, there's a variety of them, both offensive, offensively and defensively, and player, you know, individual player stuff. And how you doing? First and foremost, the last couple of days, the winds picked up a, a little bit here in mini, and it's starting to feel like an actual fall. We've been kind of spoiled this fall, but um, how are things on your end? And uh, we got a lot to talk about. Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, yeah, the weather's changing, getting into fall, and leaves are falling off the trees. I'm just there's this one tree outside my house. I'm just clinging to the leaves on that. I think it's like a big oak tree. The leaves are still green, so I feel like we got a little bit of time left there. But you know, going into the buy, you know, we wanted to stay healthy. That was the biggest key. And you know, generally, I think the team is pretty healthy. Pierce may or may not be back this week, and Obviously, the Pat P uh, injury is a huge deal uh, going into the bye. And, 
you want to come out of it. So with those two losses, I mean, those are really only two I can think of that are significant injuries. Um, it's going to leave a lot uh, on the table for Cam Dantzler to try to, you know, I've got mixed feelings on it. I think Cam is capable of picking up 80% of that slack, just the lack of experience. Uh, but then part of me is like, well, Cam's kind of a hothead, or I wouldn't say a hothead, but uh, it seems to be up and down, a little inconsistent, I guess is the best way to put it. And how's that going to pan out? And then, you know, go to the other side, there's Breland and, you know, he's also inconsistent, like you like to say, feast or famine. And he's picked up this here, but then he'll drop something there. His tackling seems to improve. So I'm a little bit worried about the secondary as far as the corners are going. I think Woods and, and Harrison Smith are pretty good. But I think that's my biggest concern uh, coming out of the bye. Yeah, I mean, it's a legit question. Can, you know, Danzler let's say I come on off of COVID and he didn't have just regular COVID where you had some symptoms, dude lost 15 pounds. And like I said before, it's not like he's 210 or something like that. You know what I mean? He's, he's a, he's a skinny dude. He's a skinny long dude. But, um, you know, I do remember in the past when Zimmer's had, you know, he only had that one bad season last year defensively, I should say. And, you know, there were some times when, you know, roads are closed, uh, when he was a damn good corner, when he would be a little banged up or another corner would be a little banged up and a couple of games would go by and we'd manage just because we had a good enough defense to kind of gel. And, and you know, we, we do have a lot more depth than we've had, or especially last year, experience depth, even like Alexander, Sure, there's a couple of plays that you're like, mm, man, you just see Alexander running, you know, after the guy or whatever. But he's played pretty solid, too. He's also able to step up. Let's say Breland or, Dan, you know, Danzler does have just a rough, rough first half or something. Maybe even Alexander could pop in. It's not ideal. We like him, you know, in the slot at the nickel and whatnot. But I think I think that 80 percent thing that you talked about is is, is dead on there. I think that that is possible that I don't believe, you know, during this stretch, I think Danzler, I want to kind of say this a little bit detailed here during this four game stretch, at least where we won't or three games, at least for sure. We know Pat Pete won't be playing. I think overall Danzler could fill some of that void, a good chunk of it. Um, but it does. Uh, it's it's kind of like man, his first game back, and he's got to go against, you know, a plethora of wide receivers. So it's kind of got me a little nervous, especially against Dallas, because they can just wing that thing all over the yard. They can, and C.D. Lamb and uh, Amari Cooper, and I think Gallup. They still have Gallup there. I think he's coming back. Yeah, I think he. Well, just in time to face the Vikes, I think he's going to play. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a tall order. Now, you know, Cam did hold up pretty well last year, but as even Cam mentioned in the press conference, that, you know, Lamb was in the slot last year, so Cam didn't see much of him. But this year they have him outside, and uh, it, I think he kind of had his way with, with, with Gladney, but uh, that being uh, C.D. Lamb. And that's my biggest concern. I think guys like Gallup and, and Cooper are more, I guess, I guess stereotypical outside wide receivers, but CeeDee Lamb's pretty dynamic in what he can do and the catches he can make and how fast he is and what he's proven already. And, it, you know, if Dak is back and he continues to play as well as he has for the beginning of the season, um, that could be a problem. Now, I do have some faith in Cam just because I feel like he's a dog and you can beat him and he's going to come back at you. But it's a question of, you know, knowing where he has to be and his assignments and those type of things. I think athletically he's fine. It's just are you up to speed uh, in your brain as far as like your coverages and so on? If you can do that and try to keep things in front of you, I think we'll be all right. And I think they're probably going to see a lot of them going at Breland again, just because he's so hit and miss. And what's that going to say about Breland if, if he can't hold up against, you know, with Cam on the other side of, of him, then it's just, it just seems to me like there's so much inconsistency now 
a lot of people have been talking about maybe bringing in a veteran corner from somewhere or making a trade. And yeah, I'm not really uh, with that. I don't know where you stand on it, but I think you got corners that you need. Uh, if you get down to Boyd and Harrison hand though, we're going to be in some trouble. Yeah. I mean, it'd be different if Pat P was out for the season, then I'd say, yeah, why not? It makes no sense not to do it. We got some cap space anyway. Um, and you're right. Dansler. Last year, he showed he had the competence to bounce back when he would get beat or whatever. But, man, when he, he get beat, it wasn't by a whole lot. I mean, I remember time and time again we'd say, and this was a lot of the corners, but we're talking about Cam here, um, he'd be right in the play. He'd be right there positioned well, and the guy would just make the catch. Now, sometimes that's going to happen in the NFL, obviously, just like in the Seattle game. It's a little different. But he would be right there, and then, man, the, down the stretch – Last seven games or whatever, you look at his numbers, you just look at the eye test that popped off the screen. He looked pretty damn good, and you're right about Breland. You know, we can't get lulled to sleep in these last three games of his. Really a major improvement, but, you know, um, <laughs> we'll see how that, you know, how that lasts. And since we're on the defensive side, um, they've come a long way from just giving up crazy yards. Obviously, we know about the second half, late second half, um, you know, scores that we've given up, the amount of points we've given up in that time. But they've come a long way basically since, like, just getting beat up all the way through Seattle through the first half. And since that second half, they've tightened up. And, and a lot of it is just the run defense and, uh, you know, Griff not being offsides, you know? Yeah, and they lead the league in – Good categories like uh, sacks, number one in sacks in the NFL. I think number one in hurries and pressures. So they're getting, you know, pressure, obviously, on the quarterback. The problem is the run defense, though, Chris. I think Pierce will help with that when he comes back, but it's not just that. I think there's the continuity things going on there uh, with the linebackers, Barr coming back in and getting a feel for what's going on in there and, uh, Tomlinson seems to be pretty good against the run, but he was not as good as maybe like Linval was, at least not yet. And we're not seeing a lot of Sheldon Richardson. So I'm thinking, you know, we got to shore that up somehow, whether that's scheme wise or what you can do, or maybe just settle in on a couple of really good run stoppers in the middle. It's hard to tell what to do to fix that because you know, Kendricks is solid. If he's there, he'll make the tackle bar pretty much was touted to help the run defense, but we haven't seen a lot of that. So maybe he's getting back up to speed again. And Vigil was pretty good as well. So it's not like we don't have the athletes to do it. It's just something's going on there. To me, that smacks of like either communication or scheme or something like that. But Zimmer tends to round out pretty good run defenses. So I have to put my faith that they'll get that fixed. And to me, that's been the biggest problem. If you get pressures on the quarterback, it's going to help your secondary and guys like Cam and, and Breland and, and those guys. And, you know, Harrison Smith's seen a lot. So I feel like that's, you know, symbiotically going to help uh, with the pass rush, help the, the secondary. But, you know, it's hard to really pinpoint what's still wrong with the defense, although they have improved since you said since the second half of that Seattle game. It's just they're not quite there yet, and they're going to need to be in this next stretch of four games. Yeah, exactly. We're going to we're going to definitely need them. And, and also number one now in third down, which is, uh, you know, key, especially to a passing team. Um, But, yeah, I think 29th and rush allowed <laughs> it's also 22nd in takeaways. So we do need some more takeaways. Um, but when a team is able to rush like they have and it's not, ju you know, we talk about, OK, limit the big chunk yardages like we're not used to seeing. And, and I like how you pointed that out. Some of it, sure, some of those missed tackles does seem like some of it has been uh, a linebacker, um, you know, not in the right position and whatnot or, or not making the play or whatever. Um, but, yeah, well, man, it, it really needs to tighten up that way because other than that, you know, besides the silly penalty here and there, mm. it, it's, um, it's really tightened up, and it is a bend that don't break. You know, it, it's damn good in the red zone as well. So, uh, you know, I, I think that they can at least, you know, it's been back to back with, with Dallas. We're not previewing the game just yet, I know. But, you know, the last two years have been pretty high scoring games. 
and it's come down pretty much to the wire, if I remember correctly. But any other defensive uh, items you'd like to uh, touch upon before we get into some of this offense and, dare I say, special teams? Yeah, yeah you can say special teams. And, you know, defensively, I think you're going to face – a multitude of different offenses coming up, right? So you've got Dallas, who's very talented and pretty, I would say, uh, a classic offense. And then you've got, you go on to to face um, Lamar Jackson, which is a different total deal, you know, and things that they can do. And then after that, you go back to like a prototypical sort of NFL offense and you're going to be jumping back and forth with styles here. And I think that's going to, be interesting to see how they adjust defensively. I think that's like these next four games are, are pretty much it. You think going forward, uh, you're going to find out at least what you're made of and, and what kind of team you are and wh- what you lack and what you're, what you're good at uh, against some pretty good teams. So um, defensively, like I said, I think they're going to continue to get better. I thought maybe they'd be at a point now where uh, you could start to see a little bit of frosting on the cake, but right now it's still just, you know, baking the cake. So you got to get that stepped up and maybe over the buy the self scout and so on helped out a lot with that. So offensively, Chris, um, one more thing I did forget. Steven Weatherly did get traded hmm. and Patrick Jones is now going to get some reps here. Yeah, that's my guy. That's I feel like that kid's going to be really That's why I wanted to bring it up. I see. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited about that. I didn't know that they elevated uh, Patrick, but I knew that they traded Weatherly, and uh, I was not upset about that at all because, you know, me and my annoyance I have with bringing people back. Some people, like Mac, bring Mac back. You know, Griffin I had a problem with. It's actually done been a pretty good thing. But I think this Jones kid's really talented. I saw him in the preseason. I think he played significant downs in the, maybe one of them, but he looked like the perfect other end to Daniil Hunter. Now, I'm not sure if he's going to be rotating with Daniil or if they're going to be putting him on the other side. But if it were me, I'd put him on the other side because Wanham hasn't shown much that's outstanding except for just being, you know, pretty good. He got one sack I think I can think of. But the guys behind that are like, well, Weatherly wasn't really anything. And, you know, uh, I think there's some more depth back there. But just the fact that I can't remember who they are just says – uh, volume. So I think uh, that's going to be someone who could flash in, in the second half of this season. Yeah, possibly. I think DJ has been all right. He hasn't turned into that starter, uh, but Griff has been phenomenal, especially if you look at, you know, paying a million dollars a year or two. I mean, that's about his bang. I'd like to see how, like, he's probably top 10 easy bang for your buck uh, deal in the, in the league right now. I'm pleasantly surprised with Griffin. Like yeah. I wasn't expecting a third of what he's done and uh, he's definitely been a, a pleasant surprise uh, from where I stand. He's playing better than he did his last year here. And oh, I suppose, you know, there was some stuff going on that year. So that plays into it, of course, um, moving to the offensive side, you know, the O line needs to continue to show what we've seen from it. It can't uh, have all these, backward motion type stuff like we were 31st um in penalties and there's also this stat here that stands out the vikings and this comes from dusty baker on twitter the vikings have been flagged for offensive holding 17 times in six games this is the most uh uh, penalties through week six and also just the the fall starts and 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 maybe just like a late hit like Udo's done it twice where you just come smash someone out of nowhere. And you're like, dude, I understand maybe, you know, you're stressed out or or, or you're not playing as well this game, or maybe someone did cheap shot you and you know, it's always, they always get the second person, right? I mean, we, we know that, but, um, I don't see the old line like week to week falling backwards, meaning sure. They'll have a tough, a rough game, but I, I think that, with the unit that they have, they're young enough to where I don't see them going way backwards uh, from week to week. So I'd like to see that improvement keep going uh, uh, with the offensive line because that pretty much says so much about our squad like it has the last few years. Well, Derisaw, I mean, 
I don't, you didn't know what to think, you know, he's out for the first part of the season and he's a, he's a first round pick and it's like, okay, well he could be this or he could be that. And it turns out, I mean, I've watched probably some isolated clips on him and I'm not an offensive line guru by any stretch of the imagination, but you know, when you see somebody get pushed around, you know, when you can see somebody can attach to somebody and move them out of the way. And he just seems strong. Uh, I know that he had some criticism about him in the run game, but you know, that'll get cleaned up. But as far as pass protection, just very impressed so far. And I think that's kind of a glue for the offensive line. I mean, you had all these pieces and none of them really matched. And, you know, I haven't really taken a deep dive on Cleveland or anything like that. I'm not, you know, offensive line is like I've mentioned is not my thing, but uh, I feel like you're good there. They're young and they're moving forward. Uh, Penalty is obviously an issue, but I mean, refs can call holding on any play and sometimes it's legitimate. And sometimes you're like, well, what the, what was that? Like, all he did was, you know, reach out. So and sometimes you're saving your quarterback from just getting smashed in a fumble too. You know? Sure, exactly. And and a lot of different things go in there, but on the whole, I feel like they've improved to the point where we're not like, ah, oh, you know, we're not, you know, cursing them every game going, well, if we just had a league average line now, can they get better? Obviously. Yes. And with them getting better, I think our offense will get better, but let's get cook back in there. See how that works out. Uh, let's get, you know, cousins to progress a little bit more and what he can start to feel comfortable in the pocket. Uh, I don't know who said this, but Kirk was quoted as saying that he didn't even notice Darisaw, which is a good thing that you, you just don't notice a guy that offensive linemen tend to, if you notice them, it's not for good things. And uh, Kirk said he was, his pocket was clean. And if you can give, like I said, here's where we're going to find out one, if they're any good, if they've improved, and can this be consistently counted on, not only by us, but for Kirk Cousins to know that he's got time in the pocket now, maybe not have happy feet or see ghosts and some of the stuff we were talking about last year, where he can sit back comfortably in the pocket and throw darts to people, which leads only to good things for our offense. And I think that's where it's headed as opposed to, oh, no, here we go again, offensive line not holding up. I think they're going to find a way to get it done. and and, and that could lead to 30, 35 points a game, which is a way to win football games. Yeah, and in the Seagulls, really in that Cleveland, I'd say we saw a little bit about that. But we haven't seen that from Cousins since week four and week six last year. The last, like, 16-some-odd games have been pretty nuts. So, yeah, I mean, and then look at Cook not even fully healthy. Look at the game he had. He had, like, 130 or 40 yards rushing. Um, and he, he can't be worse, right? I doubt he was pressing his ankle, you know what I mean, in, in this two-week break. So he should be ready to go just hit the ground running. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. So overall, keep improving on the old line and then limit the big plays on defense, man. That Those have been a killer all year. So the we talked about it for, you know, a little bit last year or <laughs> last week, talked about it at the beginning of the show. The importance of going two and two and being five and five with seven games left, especially with the Pat P returning somewhere in that realm when you're five and five. How realistic is it, Eric? How how realistic is going two and two in the next four? Yep. I think it's highly realistic. I think asking for more than that is where we start to get on the is it realistic or not? If you're, I mean, I think you can get two of those four. Uh, I'm not sure where they come. I like us against Dallas. We'll get into that in the preview. Um, but I feel like Baltimore is going to be a little more herky jerky and, and, and a little bit more unpredictable because I just feel like Lamar is a tear us up. We're not great tacklers when it comes to in space and, uh, we tend to turn our backs and man coverage. And those are things that Lamar can feast on, but uh, you know, we're, we're going to split with the Packers one way or another. So we're going to win this one or lose this one. And, and the Rams are, I'm worried about Aaron Donald or Aaron Donald a lot. Uh, yeah. Just cause you know, we're young offensive flying. This guy's total, but we'll get to that when the week comes. But um, 
Yeah. Where, which one of those two wins? I don't know, Chris. Um, it could be any one of the four or none of the four. So, uh, you want to come out to do it. I, I think Dallas is a good chance of beating them. I think the Rams are a good chance of beating them. Packers at our place, you could beat them. That's that can happen. Uh, it's probably a good chance for a win. Um, the Baltimore one is that's a tough one for me to win. Um, but I Especially think it can road. be done. Sure. So yeah, is it realistic? Absolutely realistic. Um, but when you get to like, can we do four out of four? Now that's unrealistic. Can we do yeah, three, three out of four? Three out of one, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like ah, and I a little, think a little fanboyish at that point. Sure. And one out of three is also to me a little bit unrealistic. So or one out of four. So it, I think two and two is where you want to be, and it's also the most realistic expectation. But give give me three out of four. I'll take that. Yeah. And you know if we come out and lose the home game to the Cowboys then all of a sudden one out of three seems a lot more than than three out of four at that point. But Cowboys at Ravens at Chargers then Packers home, 20 and six is the combined uh, record of all those. So it, it, it is, like I said, though, if you look at those top five, you know, teams in the NFC, that's pretty much there more than likely. Maybe one of those teams could fall off or injury stuff or whatever, but that's six and seven is wide open and it's really about living up like what we saw in this three to three stretch improving Mm. a minor tad bit and and so living up to some of the potential we've seen you still got to do that to get to two and two but i think it it becomes a little bit more you know plausible so i'm with you i I think it's very doable that way Uh, here's here's my thing about it is like i could have brought this up during the offensive bit too but you're going to have to score with some of these teams, right? You're going to have to score with Dallas. You're going to have to score with uh, with L.A. I'm sorry, I got the Rams and the Chargers mixed up. Um, you're going to have to score with, which could be a pretty high-scoring game with Baltimore. So you're going to have to do some things offensively that aren't in your blueprint for the last two seasons. You're going to have to throw the ball, right? You have three wide receivers with K.J. Osborne now, so you're able to – to do three wide receiver set stuff. You think you have a pocket you can throw in now. You know, you you think you have a quarterback who's progressed to a point where, you know, you're not so worried about him throwing the ball. So you're going to have to throw the ball in these. Uh, and then to make Cook more effective, my point being is you're going to might have to progress towards uh, pass to open up the run as opposed to run to open up the pass because – really establishing the run here is just making sure you have Delvin on the field in some capacity, right? If you put Delvin in the backfield, that pretty much establishes the run for almost any defense. Yeah. You'll have to run it a couple of times, but you don't need to run it 10 out of 12 plays to establish the run. What you need to do now is score with these teams. So you're going to have to come out, break your tendencies a little bit and throw the ball so that you can get cook off on some good runs. And that seems to be where the philosophically there's a problem with Zimmer and philosophically, that's not what we're built for and all that other stuff. Well, that's tough because you're probably going to give up points to any one of those four teams and you're going to need to match them. Yeah. And that is something that, you know, there has been some talk of, um, you know, should at the end of the season as just a talker in the bye week should the Vikings, you know, extend Kirk Cousins in the last, you know, almost season's worth of game now. We have actually been passing more. We have seen them have to not have eight in the box because of our passing game. And a lot of it is, obviously, when you play a damn good defensive line, it's that because the all line usually screws up as well. But it's also, like you said, um, you know, Zimmer calling a timeout and talking it through. Here's what we're going to do. And then all of a sudden the conservatism comes out like crazy. We'll have breached that Kirk Cousins extension a little bit uh, after we preview the Cowboy game. Any other items before we get into this year? Dallas Cowboy game? No, maybe you talk about, uh, you know, 17 week season and, uh, what our buy is in was on week seven. So now we've got what, 10 more games, 11 more games uh, straight. Yeah, there's a little break. Games. 
there's a little break. What after we play Pittsburgh on a Thursday, and then we don't play again until Sunday. So there's a little bit of a break after that. But sure. I guess is the was it too early to have the buy? Or is it a good time for the buy? I mean, I think a lot of it changes. If Pat P doesn't pull his hamstring. I think we're probably feeling a lot better about where we are in the buy than we than we feel right now. I mean, that what towards the end of the game, it, that's unfortunate. It's just changed the whole feel of the bye week. Yeah, no doubt about it. We were talking about how Darius uh, sure wishes weren't there weren't a bye week right now. He's just like, hey man, I just got in the game. What's going on? I don't I don't want to do this. I, I want to keep winning. Um, yeah, you're right. It did come at a good time though. It really did. Um, as far as last year's game, the year before the Vikes beat the Cowboys, either the year before or the year before that. I think it was last year. They had like a the Cowboys had a hail mary at the end of it to try to win, and it didn't work. Last year, they beat Dallas, beat the Vikes 31 to 28. And uh, both Cousins and Cook had fumbles in the first half that set up about 10 points there. Now, they did manage to come out hot. I'm looking at it right now. They scored three straight touchdowns um, to get up uh, in that game, 21 to 16 and then 21 to 24, but did manage to uh, give up you know, an 11 play drive to lose. And, and it was a, a turnover on Dallas at the end. So it was a, when you look at the game, it, it, it does kind of feel like the defense couldn't hold them and the offense screwed up early in the game. So the offense wouldn't have had to have come back if, if they didn't, you know, cause the sink cook fumble, because when you look, well, first of all, it was with Dalton and they weren't, you know, he didn't have some kind of great game. Uh, Elliot ran for a hundred yards, but on the flip side, you know, Cook did have 115 yards and a touch and, you know, Cousins threw the ball 30 times, and, you know, so it really just came down to the minor little stuff. And sometimes that is, you know, a blindside hit from the back, you know, there, there's all sorts of stuff like that, that, that can just, there wasn't much is my point. There really wasn't much there in, in, in the difference. And, you know, we, we obviously play better in the second half on defense this year. And not so much on offense, um, but looking at it, you know, this is a tight ass game. Like it's pretty much held uh, since it's open at a two and a half point favorite on the road. Dallas is uh, the over under 54 and a half. I think that's about right. Cause like you said earlier, it, you know, there's going to be a lot of scoring um, Prescott, you know, has a little injury. So he could be, some people are saying, ah, oh, he might be rusty. He hasn't been practicing. And, and that's a fair point. But I think we talked about this right before the show started that he didn't get a ton of practice or game time in the preseason because he got hurt. I think his shoulder or whatever. And he came out and looked pretty damn good so far this year. I mean, the guy's a stud. So this is going to be really a, a tight game. I mean, I, I don't see any difference the last couple of years as far as how this game's going to play out. If you look at it, um, you know, we'll talk about Diggs, uh, or at least maybe you will. I don't know. I, I have a couple of numbers on him that kind of makes you go, hmm, interesting. But they've struggled in the red zone, um, the Cowboys have. They're, not, they're like seventh worst in the NFL. So they've had a little bit of issues with that and also short yardage. Their lines played pretty damn good um, and sometimes elite. Sorry, PJ Fleck. But on the short yardage, it kind of feels like us. That they're not that good at short yardage on paper so far through this thing. So, you know, that the, the bend that don't break because they are going to move the ball. We know that. You know, we, we know that. So, if, if you know, if you're not getting turnover, hey, they're going to chuck the ball around too. So maybe, you know, especially without Pat P, maybe, you know, that's where we do get some of those takeaways. But I, I don't see them, unless they're down, putting the ball up in the air 48 times or something, just because our pass pressure and nobody's hurt there. And you can have the best corners, or you can have pretty damn good corners. But if you got, a, you know, the ends that can get there and the, the D tackles that can hold ground, and push the pocket back here and there, it's going to be a tough afternoon. And kind of like I talked about earlier, we have seen injuries in the past to our number one guy, and we've managed to still be a pretty good defense. And a lot of it has to do with that pressure. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, those are all really great points. And I think you're right about where we are similar teams built similarly, um, similarly strength, strong at, you know, mere images of each other positions like linebacker and uh, running back and receiver and, you know, quarterbacks are in the same general tier. So, I mean, I think Vegas is pretty much spot on. I think there's going to be a lot of points. I think it's going to be back and forth. I think, you know, the last two years, Chris, I think the year before last year, it came down to Kendricks with a, a diving pass breakup on third or fourth down, I think, uh, in Dallas. So it's been close every time we play them. Um, I think they are pretty familiar with uh, McCarthy being the coach of what he wants to do and uh, seen enough of him throughout the years that you kind of get a good feel of what they want to do, just different athletes. And I think that uh, Vegas is spot on. I, for me, I, it's hard for me to really say who's going to win this game. I, I, I'm going to go Vikings because they're at home and we seem to be sort of on a, a winning thing here. So uh, I'm going to go Vikings, but by one, by two, by three, I mean, not by much. I think it's going to, it's going to, defenses will, you know, here, I hate to say it because it's cliche as it gets, but, you know, turnovers, special teams, uh, penalties, that's what's going to decide this game. It's not going to be, I don't think it's, it'll be big plays. I don't think it'll be anything like that. I think it's just going to be like who plays better football, sound, fundamental, good football, tackles well, uh, you know, because I think it's just going to come down to just that little, that hair, that difference, you know, two to three to one point. It'll be the difference. And I'll give the Vikings the edge because they're at home, but yeah, I'm somewhat confident of that. Yeah, you're right. Most of these games uh, do come down to that. And that's why we're three and three, right? <laughs> because all those things you listed, uh, we shouldn't be three and three. Whatever the record is, I'm not going to say, oh, we should be six and oh, no, 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 calm down. Cleveland shut us down. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's exactly what it's going to come down to. And it literally came down to that last year almost. I mean, sure, if we had this year's defense, maybe it would have been different, but could have, would have, should have. Now, when it comes to Trayvon Diggs, oh, by the way, 28-27 is what I have written down here, sir. One point, so I'm right there with you. Vikings uh, getting the dub. Um, So Trayvon Diggs, right? This dude's got the most INTs. Um, And it's funny. He's been making plays left and right. Right. No doubt about it. I did a little I'm not I don't I didn't see every all 22 play, but I did a little deep dive on his numbers and whatnot. And he also has it's kind of interesting. And the reason why I brought this up is because it's like I've said it. I've heard plenty of people say, why the hell do you keep throwing to him? then? I mean, geez, you know, but that's kind of from afar, only watching the primetime game. And sometimes that I think everybody's guilty of that sometimes where you're just like, oh, I didn't see that part. Oh, I didn't know that, you know, because I'm not watching every Cowboys game. And he also has the most penalties. And although he's on pace for the most INTs, he's on pace to give up the most receiving yards, too. Um, So that's why people are still testing him. Maybe they're going to slowly but surely not. But that's why they're still testing him, because. Because I've seen two full games of them, but and then, you know, when you see the highlights, what do they see? Oh, do they show like, oh, he gave up eight yards here, 16 yards. No, they're going to show the picks or if he gets beat or something like that. That's what you're going to see in highlights. So taking a little bit deeper dive on it, I was like, oh, okay, so he does get penalties and gives up a chunk of yards. I think he's given up the most yards in the league. So it's all of a sudden you're like, huh. Okay, so I understand why people are still going at him. Um, But it is dangerous, (laughs) no doubt about it. It is dangerous. But, yeah, I'm right there with you. One, two, three-point game. You know, the way the season's gone, it's happened twice positive for us. But it feels like whoever has the game or the ball last is going to win the game unless it's the Vikings, you know? I mean, (laughs) it's weird to say that because our offense has done so well in that position. Mm. But – has it have we finished it no we really haven't all, all but two so i don't know man i, I do think this is going to be a, a all the way down to the wire and dak if he's healthy and back is a type of quarterback that will stay in the game 
and just do enough moving around and they have this skilled position, they clearly have a better offensive line than us and have for quite some time. So I'm with you there. I'm with you there. Any other takeaways from this uh, preview in this game or, or, you know, we'll get to the cousins talk. And then of course we'll talk a little go for football to close. I was going to say that, you know, the last team with a, with the ball will win, but if they score a touchdown and you line up Greg Joseph and <laughs> yeah. 38 yards for the win, you know, we're back into just, nobody's looking at the TV and looking away and, did he make it? I had to, did he? I don't know. So, yeah, I don't know. It's Let's hope it doesn't come down to that, but most likely it will come to some sort of thing like that. Now, uh, go for football. Where do we go from there? Well, hold on. Let's talk the Cousins thing because that has been a question. Oh, you want to talk about there. Um, so I'm hoping to avoid that because I thought about it all day, and I'm like, God, I don't know what I do. So let's hear you first on that one. Sure. And, and, and just to add a little bit, our third down defense is back to – where it normally is at the top, but the third down passing offense is not as bad as people think, not just completing a pass, but completing a pass for a first down. And we've said that a couple of times when we've seen usually, you know, when we've seen the stats at the end, how many first down passing and running, usually it's a little bit more even because we usually get a lot more running first downs. And that hasn't been the case this year, but uh, Cousins is tied for fourth in the league. Um, percentage wise, as far as passing for getting a first down on third down. And that's something just moving those chains are going to be big, no doubt about it. But, you know, there's a saying, put some respect on my name. You know what I mean? And that comes from the rap world. Uh, but anyway, I would, uh, I was in favor of the extension, uh, last time, um, we chose to give the $10 million in cap money uh, that freed up to a guy, a safety that's not here anymore, whereas we could have gave it to Sheldon. We could have gave it to a, a, a solid guard. You know, that's in the past, obviously. But um, by extending him, clearly you tweak the cap number for next year. Obviously, he's not worth that amount. There's only a handful of guys that are going to be making that money. Well, there's actually about four or five of them now, but, um, you know, as their contracts kick in, I think he's going to be third or fourth next year, third, I think, because there are some people that jumped up on him. But still, $45 million is just too much. But the only thing I didn't like about the last extension is it wasn't long enough. And I know that's sacrilegious to some people, but we have found out that he's tradable to an extent. Um, but it just it, it, it helps the, the cap number, not the the guarantee i mean there's a lot of guaranteed money in this but not the off the well it's still on the books but not on the cap number i think that was the key we would give him one more year we wouldn't be staring at this 45 million um but when you look at it i mean like i said for you know game four game six last year he played horrible he just did there's no doubt about it but since then in 16 games so basically before this season a season worth of you know, it's not a small little measurement. It's a full season. He's uh, completing 69 yard or 69 percent. He's 37 touchdowns, five picks, 4,500 yards. Uh, six out of their last 12 games, we have a last-minute drive that worked, and that's not including this year with that had nothing to do with him. You know. Um, with the missed field goals and, and that one timely fumble or whatever. And then, you know, some of these narratives that have been built over time since he's been here, it's just, you know, it doesn't actually, it's not nearly as bad as people say. If you look at since last year, the start of 2020, uh, you know, so that involves the horrible foreign game. It was Atlanta and Denver, I believe. This is most TD passes scored within a three point margin. Okay. So it's not just garbage time. He's second only, or he's tied with actually, I'm sorry. He's tied with Russell Wilson, cousins, Mahomes, and Brady. Aaron Rodgers, our guy to the uh, East has 25 of them, that bastard. Um, but the guy has improved in minor ways that we've asked them. You give him a little pocket room. He's able to, to to scramble a little bit. Now, he's ever going to be that great at scrambling? No, he's not. But the little minor stuff we've asked him to do, 
he has improved. And even if you, you know, he's, I think, fifth, in, he has the fifth most uh, game winning drives. And that's, like I said, that stat of win or lose or game winning drives can be tweaked a little bit. And we've seen examples of it right here this year. So, yes, I don't have any qualms about it. I know people are still think he's just garbage or whatever, and, and they point to next year. Well, we're not even there yet. You know, we're, that doesn't count on our cap until it counts on our cap in the new year. Because remember, last year was supposed to be cap hell, and we had one of the best defensive signings we've had, you know, multiple. So, and all of a sudden we had, up until we did these extensions, we still had like $13 million under the cap. So if that was hell, I don't know what is. But of course next year it would have to be tweaked. But yes, I would extend them because then, like I said, you can loosen up some of that cap. And maybe, as we both said last week, we would add a center guard next year to, to, to beef up that middle because the edges look pretty good. Yeah, you said a lot of stuff there. And most of it, I agree with, if not all of it, uh, particularly the part about my biggest complaints about Cousins in the past. He's sort of cleaned up this year. And I've been very forward in saying that uh, I've been impressed with him. Now, as far as extending him, let's throw some things in here. Uh, let's ex- let's assume that Zimmer's back as coach. Spielman's back at G- as GM. Uh, all is the same status quo. Because if you change coach and GM or both, you know, then you start to think about, well, do you really want to carry over Cousins into a new regime, blah, blah, blah. So let's let's just throw that out and just say everything remains status quo. I'm going to say I would extend him, and it's for the argument that we talked maybe off air about last week was at this playing rate, the way Kirk is playing right now, he's top 12-ish, top 13-ish quarterback. Uh, how hard is it to come across another top 12, top 15 quarterback in this league? It's incredibly hard. There are teams that have been searching for 10 years to try to find someone like that. You have one on contract right now with ability to extend. Yes, he has his flaws, and we can argue about what those are, but at the end of the day, he's somewhere in that area of, of top 15 and probably better than that. This year, we don't have to go all the way to 15, though. Let's be honest. Some people will argue. I agree with you, but arguably you are right. That's what I'm saying. I don't think there's an argument to be had. I think those are Cousins haters. If if this is a 15th ranked year, then I can't really have a debate with those people. Mm, Fair enough. But so just the scarcity of, of what he is would lead me to say, yes, you have to, well, I won't say you have to, but it would be smarter to extend not to talk about the, the salary cap. Cause if you, if you can extend him and take his cap number down, extend it out. I mean, that's all pluses, right? I mean, that's anybody would do that. You would think um, now, if you would ask me the same question last year, let's say he was up for contract last year. I think I'd have a different answer, but what I've seen this year, as far as like, you know, game-winning drives or potential game-winning drives. Um, The ability to like not – like he slipped out of a sack last game that he – I don't think I would have saw the year before. Um, He hasn't been throwing – sure, he hasn't been throwing dumb passes uh, or just meaningless passes. Like I can remember a few, like the one way behind the line of scrimmage and the other one. He has his problems. He's not that mobile. Um, But he's in the prime of his – for a quarterback, the prime's like 30 to 40. This is these are the prime years of him. He's just entering that. He seems to be playing a little bit better. Offensive line is now young and improving, knock on wood. There seems to be a lot of reasons to go ahead He's and healthy. extend him. He's healthy. The guy's healthy. He's healthy. He stays healthy. And you don't really have to. I mean, you got Mond behind him, right? So if you you want a future, somebody to put some hope on. You know, you can go with Kellen Mond and hope that he improves. And next year, he'll probably be able to, you know, definitely take the the quarterback two spot. Um, so, yes, I would extend him. Now, let's say you go through a coaching change or GM change. Would I extend Kirk through that? It, probably because if it's, it's not, an offensive coach, more than likely, too. Well, sure, because, I mean, it just comes down to it, Chris. We 
I mean, if, if you can, well, you hand, get if you can, right. If you can hand me another top 12, top 15 right. quarterback, let's sure. sign him up. Let's make a we'll change. Extend him. <laughs> sure. If you can draft somebody and say they're going to be top 15 in the league. Sure. Let's go yeah, that way. Cam's but, shoulder was better. Hey, sign cam, but his shoulder's not better. I think a lot of fans tend to forget how hard it is to find a quality starting quarterback in the NFL. And that's what it boils down to. And it's crazy that this fan base is can't remember that when it, I mean, we, the shit just happened, you know what I mean? It just happened, you know, um, of trying to find a quarterback. So, um, but yeah, um, like you said, Gophers uh, football got themselves a nice win. We talked about this off air. It's not the big surprise that they beat Maryland because they gave up a big lead last year when they didn't have any kickers, but it was how they did it. Very, very dominant. You know, we did take some shots here and there, but didn't throw the ball a whole lot at all. Didn't need to. And when you run for 56 times and you can still hold a five point average, 5.8, excuse me, average, 326, I mean, 37.35 to 22.25 on the time of possession. And we got, you know, we we got Thomas now. You know, he had he got in there a little bit, but we hadn't gave him the bulk of the carries. And Fleck wasn't kidding when he said he's going to spread the ball around because there's no point in wearing down somebody. And, and these guys just don't have a ton of experience. Williams has the most, but still 21 carries, 15 and 13. That's a gorgeous stat line. But Thomas really showed something, and Irvin, you know, got over a 200-yard rushers. Yeah, I was just impressed how it actually – we talked about this out there, how how we actually got the dub, not just getting the dub. Yeah, because I think – I don't remember exactly what we said last week, but we were like, eh, this game could go either way. It could be this or it could be that. Um, and a lot like the Colorado game, it just was something different completely and, and in a good way. Uh, look – we're going to be able to run the football. It looks like with my grandpa in the backfield at this point with the offensive line that we have now, they do have problems. They're not as great as we thought they were, but they can run block and there's a lot of them. And so, you know, I like Kai Thomas. I like the switch of the backs, you know, they kind of each offer different things. Um, I think Bucky's the best of them, to be honest, uh, as I far agree. as if you're going to just one back, I mean, I think he'll probably be the, the star back next year, but I like what Kai can do inside the tackles. He's not the fastest. I think he could have scored touchdowns if he had a little more speed uh, last week, but um, he definitely has good vision. He knows how to run. He runs tough. And so uh, like I said, you just keep pumping out these running backs. And I think he's got more coming in and he, you know, he said that's what he wanted to do. And it's definitely what he's done. Um, yeah, I, the most dynamic is Bucky. I think just because he's faster He's shiftier. Uh, I like his vision a little bit more, but That's biggest spunk too. He's got that yep. spunk. Yeah, and it, the biggest thing for me that I've noticed in this last couple games is the defense's improvement. Um, I had been pretty critical of them earlier in the season, and I guess maybe they were just rounding into shape. But it's a really good defense, a tough defensive line with a big rotation. The linebackers have even started to grow on me a little bit. I think Gibbons is getting better every game. Um, sorry, Marin is kind of always sorry, Marin, but Gibbons is really turning out to be a, a heck of a linebacker. Uh, I don't like Josh Howden in the secondary. Every time I see a big play given up, I see number 23 somewhere near it. And it's just like, okay, well you have other players. Why are we attached to Howden so much? Um, but I guess there's a rotation in the safety. I mean, you got Newbin, you got some other guys that can play that spot. And, and you know, it hasn't just been this season with Howden either. It's been, for the last few seasons, big plays. He did make a big play uh, interception at the end of the game. I think it was in that Penn State game. But uh, defensively, to me, is where this team's really improved since the Miami or the Bowling Green game, and that bodes well for the for the next few games. And I think I would I would flip to the other side. I think the besides the Ohio State, those five big plays that Fleck mentions every other press conference. Uh, and multiple times in that press conference. Um, it's actually bit the, the biggest problem was the offense, I thought. So I think the offense has come around a little bit. We're, we're taking shots. And 
it comes down to healthy linebacker linebackers, wide receivers, and we still don't have Jackson back. He's not coming back this week. That's fair point. He might be gone. Mm. Hopefully he's back for Iowa. That's where we I guess we really need him. It'd be nice for him to get a, a game in there at least. But if you look at it, uh we're about halfway through the season, obviously. And rushing yards in the Big Ten, Michigan is fifth in the nation. They lead with two fifty three, Wisconsin two nineteen, Nebraska is two eleven, we're two ten. Northwestern can still run the they're kinda in the middle of the pack. So rushing the ball in third down, we're third in a successful uh ah, damn, Ohio State's third in the NCAA on third down uh pat or not passing, but just offense. Like fifty seven percent of the third downs they're they're completing. We're forty four point eight and that puts us third as well. Wisconsin's just struggling. They're hundred and twenty seventh in that category. Wow. Northwestern's down there pretty pretty bad when it comes to this game you know northwestern can't stop the ball or stop rushing you know the running 218 a game and we're actually down to 85 85.7 that's pretty damn good um so i think that we're gonna go out there they don't you know our offense isn't glitz and glamour but it is going up and their defense is like seven points worse than ours as far as giving away and they're not even averaging they're just short at 20 which is not good. Now, Northwestern, though, that Michigan game, I've watched a chunk of it, and Mm -hmm. they're just starting to open up on them right now. But it was push and shove a little bit. Now, Michigan is a running team, so they're going to slowly grind you down. They even did that to Wisconsin. They didn't blow them out right away. Um, But Northwestern's going to be there in that first half, and we have to establish a run like we have, and they're probably going to you know, run blitz. They're going to do all that stuff, and that's where we hit them with some big shots, but I like, uh, I like to say the Gophers is going to win this one. It 43 and a half point. We're a seven and a half point spread on the road. We're mm. going to have a fair amount of Gopher fans there, but 43.5, I could see a low scoring game like that, but yeah, I see right around 27 to, uh, 13 or 16 or, or something like that. Maybe 27, 20, a late, late touchdown, but I think the Gophers will get the job done at Northwestern. Hopefully they've gotten this helter skelter from game to game thing out of their system. Now I'm right there with you. I think they're just going to, like you said, they'll be in the game. They being Northwestern for probably a good chunk of the first half, but I think we're just going to lean on them and lean on them, wear them down by the second half. That defense should be pretty tired. I think we're going to run the ball an awful lot and maybe some play action, uh, you know, some big shots. But you know, Ottman Bell will probably get his. And then, you know, maybe Dalen Wright will get a little something. But I think the game plan for the rest of the season is pretty much going to be running the football with the three backs and the offensive line leaning on them. And, you know, seven and a half to me is right about right. I think Gophers by – seven, 10 points. Um, but I think it mostly will be pulling away in the second half uh, to win this one. There you have it. Any uh, last words to close the show, sir? Uh, I just hope that the defense can make another step forward. And I have a lot more faith against uh, the Cowboys uh, and possibly win by more than, you know, two or three points. If, the defense can come out and and make a statement you could win by as much as 10 and let's hope that happens there we have it we'll be back next monday let's try to get another dip go fikes go gophers peace